do you build a friendship? Some people think it's all about climbing the ladder of popularity or gathering the biggest number of followers on social media. Others believe it means throwing a birthday party at the best place so everyone will want to come. Or even laughing along when someone makes a mean joke so that you can fit with the in crowd. But none of those things can promise you real friendship. Building true friendships is not about being in. It's about being the in for others. It's showing someone that you care about them and not just yourself. It's a smile and an encouraging word when someone in your class is having a bad day. It's making a spot at your lunch table for the kid who doesn't have a place to sit. It's inviting a new kid to your birthday party, even if it's just in the backyard. It's taking time to make your own get well card for the kid in your small group who broke his leg. When you choose to be a friend, you create a safe, welcoming place for others. You'll discover you're building true friendships and others will see God at work in your life. That's why friendship is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Cause worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Jesus, you have been so faithful. Jesus, you have been so true. I will be forever thankful. Cause I never had a friend like you. Help me to be who you've been to me. To everyone I see. Let us love one another with our love like no other. Yeah, that's the way you love us, God. Never turn away, you are with us every day. Yeah, that's the way you love us, God. Your love is always been beginning to end. There's never been a better friend. So You with me in the darkest valley You with me on the mountain top I'm thankful that you never leave me And that your love will never stop Help me to be who you've been to me To everyone I see Let us love one another with our love like no other Yeah, that's the way you love us, God I sure do have a lot of friends. I have 2,762 of them. Uh, I met this girl in kindergarten and then she moved away after that. And oh, this guy friended me after I gave him my seat on the bus. And I have no idea who this person is. Hmm. I may have 2,762 friends on here, but I think I really only know like 10 of them. I... Probably should have thought that through first. Anyway, real friends are people you should really know. So let me introduce myself if we haven't met. I'm Haley and I'm here to talk to you today about friendship. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. You know how to tell who your real friends are? They show up in person, not just on your phone. 
They show up when you're happy and when you're having a party. They show up when you need help. They show up when you're sad and you need a shoulder to cry on. Real friends, your best friends, are there for you in the good times and the bad. Just like the two friends in today's story. They went through what every friendship goes through. The highs, the lows, running for your life from an angry king. Oh, okay, well maybe not every friendship goes through that part. <gasps> I wonder if one of my 2,762 friends can fix a broken phone. Oh, I know, I'll just call someone. Oh, uh, <laughs> that's not gonna work. I'll be right back. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 18 through 20. Now imagine for a moment that you're a prince. It's a pretty cool job. Your father, King Saul, is a fierce and handsome warrior with a hot temper. Away from me, you fools. Saul is the first ever king over the land of Israel. And since you're his son, most people expect you to be the next king. You'll live in a fine palace, wear royal robes, and carry the best weapons. Your name is Jonathan. Call me John. You got a great life, right? But then your dad hires a new guy, a young man your age named David, who's only a shepherd boy. But somehow, through the power of God, David has just defeated the giant Goliath, saving God's people in the battle against the Philistines. I come against you in the name of the Lord. Your dad has given David a place to stay in the palace in a high ranking army. You and David even become friends. Now imagine that David fights in every battle and wins. The people of Israel are even more impressed with him than they are with King Saul. King Saul is like great. Yeah, but have you seen David? He is like awesome sauce. To top it off, You've heard rumors that David has actually been chosen by God to be the next king of Israel, instead of you. It would be so tempting to be jealous of David, to not talk to him or hang out with him. But that's not who Jonathan was. It's not what Jonathan did. In 1 Samuel, we discovered that instead of being jealous, Jonathan chose to share the best of what he had with his friend. Here, take my robe. Then people will see how important you are. Are you sure? Take my belt, too, and my sword. But these are all things for a prince. You're worth it. Thank you, friend. King Saul, on the other hand, did become jealous. So jealous that he hurled a spear at David. And later on, he told Jonathan and all of his servants to kill David. Jonathan was horrified. He quickly warned his friend. Find a place to hide. I'll talk to my father and find out what's going on. The next morning, Jonathan faced King Saul. Don't harm David, he's helped you. He put his own life in danger to kill Goliath. The Lord used him to win a great battle. Why would you kill him? Okay, fine. I'll show you how awesome sauce I am by not putting David to death. Jonathan and David were relieved. And for a short time, all was well. But then King Saul went back on his word. He tried to kill David again, and when he fell, he sent other men to try to kill David. I haven't done anything to your father. Why is he trying to kill me? He won't do it. He tells me everything and he hasn't said a word about hurting you. That's because he knows we're friends and you would tell me. This is terrible. I'll do anything I can to help. So the two friends made a really complicated plan, like something out of a spy movie. Their top secret plot had David hiding instead of showing up for the feast, while Jonathan made up this story to try to find out how angry his dad was. Now, instead of going outside and talking to David about it, Jonathan chose to shoot arrows close to far like a secret message. In the middle of it all, their friendship stays strong. Whatever happens, please be kind to me. 
I know the Lord will defeat all your enemies someday, but promise to always be kind to me and to all my family. I promise. Shake. Shake. The two young men made a promise to stay friends no matter what might happen next. Then, it's time to put the plan into action. When Saul discovered that David was missing, he was filled with rage. I knew it! You're on his side! That is so not cool. As long as he's alive, you'll never be king. Why do you want to put him to death? What has he done? Saul was so angry, he couldn't think clearly. He actually threw a spear at his own son. And Jonathan left immediately. And the next morning, he hurried to the place where David was hiding and sent their top secret arrow code message. When David realized things with the king were not good, the two friends ran to meet up. One last time. I'm so sorry. My father. I know. It's not your fault. Jonathan and David hugged each other and wept. Go in peace. In the name of the Lord, we promise to be friends. He will be a witness between us and our families forever. There was nothing more to say. David left the city to hide from Saul and Jonathan went home. Now Jonathan could have allowed Saul to kill David and maybe become king himself. But instead, Jonathan trusted God and chose to protect and love his friend. Wouldn't it be cool to have a friendship as strong as David and Jonathan's? Those guys would do anything for each other. Jonathan even risked his life to protect David, but that's what friends do. They love each other no matter what. Okay, okay, not that kind of love. I'm talking about the kind of love this guy Paul wrote about in one of his letters. You can find the letter in your Bible. It's called the Book of First Corinthians. You wanna know what love is? Here's some of what Paul wrote. Love is patient, love is kind. It does not brag, it is not proud, it does not easily become angry. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it never gives up. Love never fails. That's how you show love to a friend. You're not impatient with them, you don't get angry easily, you protect them and you stand up for them, and you never ever fail. Wait, love never fails? That seems kind of difficult. The truth is, for us, it's kind of impossible to love without failing. If you really want to love your friends the way God wants you to love, you're going to need God's help. After all, he knows more about love than anyone. He loved us so much that he sent his only son, Jesus, to die on a cross for our sins. And with God's help, you can love people more than you could ever do by yourself. So, the one thing to remember today is this. Friends love one another. Sometimes friends fail, but that's okay. Friends also forgive, which is a good thing because because this was my friend Erica's phone and I think she's gonna be like, Argh! and I'm gonna be like, Argh! and then we'll laugh about it. <laughs> because she's a real friend and so am I. So I'm gonna find a way to get her a new phone. I think I'll show up and tell her in person. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna call her or text her. <laughs> okay, goodbye friends. See you next time. how you have a block party?
Hello everyone, I'm Brandon. And I'm John, and this is The, the So-and-So so -and -so Show. On this show, John and I hang out here talking together about the world we live in. We learn a little something about God, and then we discover what it means to be human. Man, we do all that? Mm. We're good. I know, and today's no different. We've got a fun day planned, and we're gonna get started with a little game we like to call the $1,000 Triangle. John, show me the money. You don't have the money? I, I spent it all on olives. What? Never mind. Okay, today we're gonna play a little game called the 25, 26, 27, 28 dollar and 31 cents. Woo! Triangle. It's time for the $28.31 Triangle. All right, here's how the game works. I'm going to try and get John to guess the answer on each of these cards. Shouldn't be too tough because the category is famous duos, people or things that go together. John, are you ready to play $28.31 Triangle? You bet I am, Brandon. Then let's play. <laughs> okay, here we go. Number one, uh, okay, this is something that you write with and something that you write on. Oh, a chisel and stone tablet. <laughs> no, it's a little more modern than that. Oh, a finger and an iPad. No, no, okay, think about this. This is very common. It's something you write with, something you write on. These are two things that go together. They are... The mortal and pastel. No, what? Pass, pass, next uh... one. All right, okay, you can get this one. This is, uh, okay. These are two things that taste great between two slices of bread. Oh, what is anchovies and mayonnaise? No. Oh, oh ketchup and sugar. Uh, uh, no, uh, okay, it's very, it's one of the most famous sandwiches you oh, can oh, think oh, of. Oh, oh, to all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce, cheese, pickles, onions on a sesame seed bun. Famous duos. Oh. Pass. Uh, oh my. Uh, Vladimir and Estragon? Yeah. All right, uh, these, uh, okay, these are two of the coolest guys on the planet. Oh, oh who's uh, Thomas Alva Edison, who invented the incandescent light bulb, and Sammy Hagar. No, 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 these two guys, they have a lot of fun every week and help teach people about God and the Bible. Oh, Mel Solomon and Greg. Uh, no, these two guys are the hosts of the so-and-so show. Stephen and Lawson? No. It's the people hosting the show right now. Right now, they're also playing the game, $28.31. Triangle. Uh, they are. It's me and you, John. Oh, uh, me and you. Oh, uh, unbelievable. I was so close. You only got one right. But <laughs> who eats peanut butter with jelly? I <laughs> mean, it's Bible story time with Kellen. Oh man. Hello, my friends. How's it going? Pretty good, Kellen. John didn't know we were a famous duo. Oh, I thought we were a famous trio. Hey, you're right. That's why I missed it. Yeah. What story do you have for us today? Well, speaking of duos, today I want to talk about one of the most famous duos in history, David and Jonathan. And to help me do that, please welcome the So-and-So Show Players. Mm -hmm. Jonathan was the prince of Israel. Hi, I'm Jonathan. And his dad, King Saul, was the very first king of Israel. I am king. David was Jonathan's best friend. Hi, I'm David. He killed Goliath. He was a really mean giant. David was a national hero, and everyone loved him. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> and... Don't tell Saul and Jonathan this, but God had decided that David was going to be the next king of Israel. What'd he say? Uh, I'm just telling the story. Still, Jonathan loved David, and he gave his friend gifts that were good enough for a prince. Here, friend. It's my bow and arrow. Uh, thank you, best friend. <laughs> and my princely tunic. Mm -hmm. Thank you. you. <laughs> and <sighs> my favorite pillow, my favorite soccer ball. Thank you. <laughs> Hold on, there's more to come. And all of the important things. Oh, You'll sleep well with him. Th thank you. This will help you in a jam. Th thank you. And this will always provide the light just the way you want it. Oh, thank you. <sighs> Jonathan probably didn't give David a lampshade, but you get the idea. They were best friends. Unfortunately, 
King Saul was jealous of David because everyone liked him so much. So King Saul sort of wanted to uh, kill David. Why does your dad want to kill me? What did I do? Well, he's not going to kill you. He, look, dad tells me everything. He wouldn't keep something like that from me. Maybe he didn't tell you because he knows how close we are. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, oof. Mm. What do you want me to do? Hmm. I'm supposed to eat with the king at the new moon feast tomorrow. Tell them that I couldn't make it. And if he gets mad, then you'll know for sure he's trying to kill me. Can you do that? Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. Wait, how will I know how your father reacts? Hmm. 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 I have an oddly over elaborate plan that might just work. Mm -hmm. You see that stone out there? Yes. I want you to wait by that stone. That's After the feast, I'll come out with a servant and I'll shoot three arrows into the field. Three. And if everything is okay, I'll say, look, the arrows are on this side of you. And if I find out that dad wants to kill you, I'll say, look, the arrows are far, far beyond you. And if I say that, then you definitely need to run. Okay? All right? Got it? Okay. What? What? Why wouldn't you just send your servant no, out no, there to no, tell no. me there's no time for discussion, okay? The game is in foot. Let's go. Go. On. Okay. <laughs> the plan was in place. Everything was set. David had chosen not to eat with the king at the new moon feast. The only question was, how would King Saul react? Well, on the second night of the feast, King Saul noticed something was missing. Son? Yes, Father. Where? Yes. Is? Yes. The ketchup! Oh, um, uh, it's, uh, right here. Right, it's right here. Oh, thank you, <laughs> thank you, and, uh, thank you. I believe it's pronounced ketchup, last I heard. Ah, huh. yeah, well, <laughs> the more you know. Ah, uh, also, Where? Yes, Father. Is? Yes, the, the, the mustard. Um, it's right, right. Right there. <laughs> yes, uh, thank you, thank yeah, you. No problem. Mm -hmm. There's a little red, a little yellow, makes a very mm -hmm. happy mm -hmm. fellow. Very good now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, son. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yes, Father. Uh, where's David? Um, he wanted to go visit his family, so I let him go. What? Uh, now, do you not realize that as long as he is alive, you will never be king? David must die! He but he hasn't done anything! Oh. King Saul was so angry, he grabbed a spear and threw it at his own son. I'm going to throw this spear at you. No, no. You best no. run! No! You no. best run! Uh, not, not a pickle spear, an actual spear, but whatever. The spear missed Jonathan, and Jonathan had all the information that he needed. King Saul wanted to kill David. So, it was time to send David the signal. Come, unnamed servant from the Bible. Let's shoot some arrows into the field for no mysterious reason whatsoever. Shall I make the sound, sire? Oh, shall you make the sound? <laughs> Don't you always make the sound? Very Thank good. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> <clears throat> Very good, very good. Mm -hmm. Excellent marksmanship, sir. Thank you, thank you. Very good. Now, run out into the field and collect those arrows. Uh, but they're just, they're just right there. Go! Okay. Hurry! Run fast, don't stop! 
The arrows are far beyond you. I feel like you're not even looking at me. Just go, run. Have I gotten there yet? Okay, okay, okay. I'm, there it. Oh, got him. Got him. <laughs> Yahtzee. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Very well, lad. You can take those weapons back to town. Okay. When the servant left, David came out of hiding and met his friend on the field one last time. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Promise me you'll always be kind to my family, even after my father is gone. I promise. In the name of the Lord. You and I have made a promise to be friends. It's not only a promise between us, but between our children after us. Yes. Go in peace. By protecting David that day, Jonathan saved the life of the future king of Israel. But more importantly than that, he saved his friend. The end. How about a hand for the so-and-so show players? Uh, wow, what an incredible story. I know, Jonathan was a prince, so by saving David, he was basically giving up the throne. And that's risking amazing. his life. I mean, Jonathan really laid everything on the line for his friend. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what friends do, isn't it? They love each other. They're patient and kind. They protect each other and never give up on each other. It's, it's like the Apostle Paul wrote in his letter to the Corinthians. Love never fails. Never? Uh, I'm not sure I'm that good of a friend. No offense. No, but. I'm with you. It's true. I think if we really want to love like a true friend, we're going to need God's help. He knows more about love than anyone. Well, think about it. He sent his son, Jesus, to die for us so that we would know how important we are to him. Talk about laying everything on the line. Yeah, that's so true. Thanks, Kellen. You bet. I'll catch you guys later. See ya. Bye, Kellen. So, if God went out of his way to show us how important we are to him, and if Jonathan went out of his way to show David how important he was, what, what does that mean for us? Don't ask me, ask them. All right, reveal the question. How can you show your friends they're important? Yeah, yeah, what are some ways you can show your friends they're important to you? Yeah, uh, maybe give them a wrapped apple. A wrapped apple? Yeah, they're healthy. Or maybe spend time with them. Oh, you don't even have to wrap the apple if you don't want to. Just talk about it together. How can you show your friends they are important? Y you know, you've never even once given me an apple. I'm Brandon. Uh, and I'm John. And this was The So-and-So Show. Not even mashed or sauced. By, you wouldn't want a mashed apple? For, Absolutely. Like Haven't you ever had a mashed apple? What are you doing, Brandon? Well, I'm just taking a stroll around the block. Boo, 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 boo. Hey, you know what this is? Eh? It's a chip off the old block.